All right, today's treatment session is to show you what we do as practitioners to help with thoracic and cervical rotation using mobilization with movement. So I've got a patient at the moment who has got a lot of pain around the left-hand side of their sort of rib cage, if you like, and there's a bit of spasm involved, there's a loss of movement, and the muscle itself is not really injured. The joints are okay, but when she moves that joint, there's some spasm going on. So the mobilization with movement really, really helps her get her rotation back. And I'm gonna show you what we do on her on a lease today, basically on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, what we do for that left-hand side. So with the thoracic spine, most of that movement comes in rotation, okay, not extension or flexion. There is extension and flexion, but rotation is the key. So when we have people, or if you put the arms opposite the shoulders, when we have people with a loss of range, so say they've got left-sided problem here and they just, you know, get to about there, go, ah, that's really sore, and it hurts them there. Or they might have it both sides, like, ah, hurts them on the left-hand side again. Sometimes these people have pain going one way, but not the other, okay? Or the other way around, they might have pain in the left, and they go left okay, but then they can't open up. Regardless, what we're gonna work on is trying to get the joint moving on that left-hand side to try and help them with whatever rotation range they've got. So, my patient has problems both directions, so she has problems right rotation and left rotation, but the pain's only left. So we're gonna work on that. Later, we're gonna show you what we do in the cervical spine for the same type of idea. The other thing you may find with these people is they also have a side flexion issue as well, just because they're simply using that muscle that's in spasm on that side. But it's usually the rotation is the most important. That's the one we're gonna go for, and you'll probably find once you improve your rotation, then your side bend gets better as well. So for this case scenario, what I like people doing is putting their hands up on their shoulders. One of the reasons is that it gets the hands out of the way for me so I can move them around, but also it covers them in front because if I've got my arm around their front, they've got a, a barrier between them and me, okay? So if I go on this side, I'm gonna mobilize the left, okay, into right rotation. I'm gonna be on the right-hand side. For this one, I'm gonna be between the two arms, okay? So my hand's between those two arms, all right? Not on top, between them. And I'm gonna hold on and cradle that shoulder. So then I can rotate it wherever I want, all right? So nice and easy. I'm trying to though pivot through an axis of her spine, if you like. So I don't wanna be tilting over anything. So you've just gotta make sure that when you rotate, you are pivoting roughly on an axis through the spine. This hand here, we're gonna use my sort of part, the hypothena part, okay? Or even the piezoform part on this side. Now, the trick with this is when you're assessing people, you want to try and think about which level feels stiff, okay, which level is painful, okay, but also with the case of my client, which level, when you mobilize it, takes the pain away. So with this one I've got at the moment, she's sort of sore on this level, that doesn't really change things, she's sore on that level, and then she's sore on the one above, and when I go in a certain level, when I glide it and rotate it, she feels better. Now the trick with this is to try and cup, if you like, under that, okay? So you find that point, that level that you want to be on, and you don't have to be that specific about which level it is. You're going for the one that improves the movement, all right? So I'm going to do a PA and move that joint like that, which really shouldn't hurt that much. If it's sore, you've got to be guided by how much grade you're doing. but. Usually what you can do is put some load into that, so you're gliding the joint already, and then as you rotate them, you can do two different things. You can push, so I'm gonna push in that direction, and think about pushing in a rotation direction as I rotate this arm. So this arm's doing the rotation, but this one's also assisting it, okay? So I'm gonna push and then push around and almost like an arc. So if I grab that joint there, push through, and then push now, so I keep my load on there, and go to where she's sore, and then back off. And this one needs to be done quite a few times. So load in, rotate away, okay? So I'm helping that joint. Usually the one that takes away the pain or is the least painful and allows the most movement is the one you wanna go for. Rather than just going for the sore one, thinking like, oh, if I mobilize the sore one, it'll help. You're after which one improves the movement, to be fair. And so making sure you are actually on that one and asking and testing them all the time, is that the, the one that makes it feel better, okay? And you can see whether you're getting more movement out of it or not. If you go on one joint and then she sort of, oh, only goes that far, then you're probably, okay, go down one 
and then she goes further. Okay, you know this one's helping, right? So one way of doing it is pushing in and rotating around. The other way that was really effective today with my client, if you do that again for me, was actually holding in and then rotating away. Okay, so what was helpful for her today was when I found that level that was the one that I wanted, I basically just loaded her in without sticking her into extension. Okay, so loaded her into that position there and put quite a bit of pressure on, held it, and kept it there and then rotated away from it. Okay, in that movement. So you can do two different things going on there. That's sort of look at my little version of things. It's not quite strictly mulligan, but holding that on and then rotating away. So you're still mobilizing with movement. You're just not going with the movement is another way of doing it. Now, that helped quite a bit with her rotation, okay, but she's still stuck going one way. So, and when she went to the left, she was still stuck a little bit that way. So mobilizing that way helped her rotating right. And, you know, we wanted to get her to sort of 90 degrees. She's sort of sitting around about 45 now, but she came in at about 10. So, you know, that improved to 45, and she's got some homework to do, but we want to try and get them a little bit more. Now, everyone's a little bit different, okay? Some people get fully 90 degrees, some people sort of 60 degrees. Remember, that rotation happens from lumbar through thoracic, so there's a bit of lumbar work there, but you want to be trying to improve the range to a decent amount both sides with this over time. When I go on that left-hand side, so when I go on this, you can either do one or two things. What didn't work on her today was mobilizing on the right-hand side to go left. What did work was mobilizing on the left-hand side and then going left, which is very interesting. So I came in this way again, so from here. So instead of going on the opposite side of the same level and thinking, oh, okay, I'll just move that and rotate it. Sometimes that works. I went on this side. Now, it's harder to get there because you know, your, your hand's obviously not the right shape, but you can either go above like that or you can go on the side. So what I did is I found that level on here and used more of my piezoform area, okay, rather than the whole part here because all I want to do is just push in with that. So from here, what I was trying to do was get into that level and then push into that way, okay, and then rotate like that. And of course, you just gotta be careful that you're not gonna block that rib on top. So whatever level you've got, try and be very specific, and then you may find that you just gotta keep that axis right and work on maybe a smaller range of movement. Remember, this one, you're mobilizing with movement. You're just trying to improve the movement that's happening at that level, rather than just going, oh, I've just gotta get all the way around and try and improve our whole movement. If you get that better, you'll probably find the whole movement improves anyway. Okay, so you don't have to try and think, okay, I've got to mobilize that and then get all the way around with her. All right, you can may find that just just getting in with a bit of pressure, a bit of that PA pressure, and gently just coaxing that body into rotation and helping that movement, you probably find the spasm lets go a little bit more because you're improving that movement pattern and then your brain, who's guarding that movement pattern, um, lets go a little bit, improves the range. You'll probably find also, some of these are very temporary, but if you can get the movement better in the clinic and then they can follow up with homework as far as rotation stretches and that sort of thing and then some strengthening through the spine into rotation in their core, they'll be more long lasting. So when they come back in, you know, they haven't re regressed. They might have regressed a little bit, but they haven't regressed all the way and you can just, every session you can get them better and better until they're absolutely 100%. So we can take the thoracic rotation idea and move it into the cervical to try and improve rotation with the upper cervical spine. Now what I like doing is working on C2 and 3 to help with rotation left and rotation right, because many people that come, not necessarily with a thoracic problem, but maybe with a cervical problem, have blocked rotation or loss of rotation to one way or the other, and that's when you can work on some cervical mobilization with movement to try and improve that, rather than just plugging away, working on PA mobilization. It's still a PA pressure, but it's into rotation, which really helps them if they're a bit jammed, a bit stuck, and a bit of muscle spasm. So with this one, obviously what you want to get them doing is being as upright as you can. You don't want them slumped down because that's going to shove the head forward. So they've got to be upright as you can. What I'm aiming for is putting the C2 on my thumbs, okay? So going in here, finding where that bumpy C2 is. Now you just got to be careful with your fingers here. You don't want to be sort of clasping around the throat too much. but these fingers are also gonna guide the head, all right? So they're gonna guide the chin around. And you've just gotta really, if you're going to the left, if I push her around to the left, sometimes she actually rotates this way as I to get there. So what I like doing is just blocking that shoulder. So 
I'm not going to get any thoracic movement, I'm only going to get cervical movement. And that just helps steady her as well, we've got something to push against. So when she pushes back, she's going to push it back against me because I'm going to tell her, okay, when I see my thumbs, I want you to push your neck back against my thumbs. And that creates the PA pressure, okay? So she's sort of doing that post anterior pressure, not me. And so I can just keep that pressure on. Now, the more I push in there, she has to fight me and push back. So she's doing a bit of movement. Then I'll get her to rotate left. So if I say rotate left for me, I'll go with her, okay? So I'm constantly working on a PA pressure and then come back again, good. As she moves to the left, I'm following her. So my pressure's always going PA. I don't sort of slip off and move. So as she gets around to the left, I'm, my pressure's gonna be going that way instead of forward, which is really nice. So if you're gonna work on one side, stay on this, if I'm gonna go left, stay on the right-hand side so you've got your knee there, which is easy. So, and every now and again, you're gonna to have to just re-educate them, lift them up a bit, all right? Get, find that C2. Now push back against me. Hold it, see how she pushed there? Hold that, is that okay? Yep. And then I've got my fingers here to guide her chin, all right? So she's gonna look around the left. I'm gonna go with her, I'm gonna push in, and I can just guide her chin with that. Go as far as I need to go, depending on the pain. Keep the pressure on the way back, so don't lose that pressure, and then you can let it go again. Now that's going centrally, you can do C2 and 3 of that, because they're the ones that do most of that rotation. You can also go off to unilateral. So if I'm going, if that was sometimes, sometimes that's really tender and they, they push back and they don't like it, maybe that is a very sensitive spinous process. You can then go on to the unilateral side onto the more the, not the transverse process so much, there's more to the lamma side of things. And if I come off, if I'm going left, if I come off to the right and go on almost like the gutter there, and so when she pushes back, so just push back against me there, then when she rotates left, I can really glide that around and I'm pushing through that way now and pushing and rotating. Making sure that she stays level. Sometimes people will sort of tilt off and want to do that. You just got to make sure that she is level when she rotates and that's where guiding them is going to be quite helpful. So let's just try that again for me. So just push back there for me. And so when she goes left, I'm on this side pushing her around like that. So if I show you on this side, what I'm doing is, if not, I'm not center, I'm off to the left here. So I'm going in, still going in that way, but being on this side here and staying on that side as she rotates around. So there's a couple of examples of what we do for that mobilization with movement, which is a really handy tool when people are sensitive, got a lot of spasm, and have got movement problems into rotation, both cervical and thoracic. See how you go, see you next time.